Um, okay. Hello. Is it on? Is, is that what it seems to believe that we are? Okay. Hi, everybody. What's up? Oh, and I already got a super chat. How nice. Uh, doing Aether, Ather, um, Ether gave us 199, I think, because he's annoyed that we are not starting on time. So, everybody, yay. Uh, welcome to Gatriarchy of Sunday. This is the first Sunday that we've had a Gatriarchy. And I think it's also the first, no, it's not the first straight guy. We had Mitch, who's not mm -hmm. gay. <laughs> um, uh, but no, no, no I, I think he's legitimately not gay. I just, I, but he's, I like, I, oh. but he's really cute. Yeah, he well, he's cute and kind of gay looking. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like he's cute in a um, in a in a Russell Crowe way. Though okay. Russell Crowe did play a gay guy in that one movie. Um, it was kind of a really depressing movie. His dad had some sort of stroke, and it was like him taking care of his dad after his dad had a stroke. It was very depressing. Um, but yeah. Okay. So Brian Martinez is here um, of Honey Badger Radio. I, I, I like to believe that people will be familiar with him. Um, but in case you aren't, uh, he is a co-host of the uh, men's rights um, and general male issues oriented um thing that uh, was founded by Karen Strawn, Allison Tiemann, and Hannah Wallen. But I would say that Brian is probably the most commonly there person at this point. Is that what it, would you say that that's true? Yeah, I think that's uh, that's basically what what's evolved to because um, essentially uh, Allison is more of a, you know, she likes to work behind the scenes more. She definitely has a lot of great ideas um, and, and talking points, but she's, she's tends to have so many big projects that she works behind the scenes. So she, you know, plans out the future of the channel, the direction of things. And she also does uh, pre-recorded content with Mike and stuff. And then Karen has been doing a lot of really great work um, on in making you know, real world out there in the flesh world appearances. So she's done a lot of like AM radio interviews. She was on Dr. Drew uh, at least once and things like that, right? Other people's podcasts that have greater reach talking about these, these issues, talking about anti-feminism and all that. So because of that, I end up doing the bulk of the show running, which I don't mind. In fact, um, I think that I've become quite comfortable and we're we're talking about i've been wanting to do this for a long time is having a regular kind of internet show that's like am radio in that people can call me like on their phone and we can talk mm -hmm. about men's issues about whatever right um so yeah I'm, I'm i'm basically the the radio host of the of the channel at this point nice nice yeah um yeah, well, I've, I've had a good time talking to you the two times that I've been on, and I think that uh, there's a number of things that we might be talking about today that might be sort of continuations of a few things that we were talking about when we were last talking, because I know that you, you had something that you wanted to bring up with me, but there was, a number, um, there was something that I was thinking about that you said that I kind of wanted to... Um, riff off of a little bit a little bit just to yeah get, yeah yeah maybe kinda, uh, I, don't, I don't know exactly what i guess you want to set it up yeah yeah maybe uh, get, the, get the ball rolling um what it was was that you were saying that a lot of people say that you know like when you explain to people and you, you start to like actually get a sense of uh sex and gender history you know like how males and females have been treated throughout history and like you know during the periods in which females didn't have that many freedoms well what was actually going on with males and it turns out that you know uh males didn't have that many freedoms either and they also had to um serve and protect they and you know it's very arguable that males had the, the worst end of the bargain out of it um i mean it, but certainly, certainly it was a lot more even than feminists would like you to believe, if, if at the very least. Um, yeah. And you start trying to convince people, like, look, women are not only not oppressed, but they've maybe never been oppressed. Um, 
then people think that that means that you want to start oppressing male uh, women. And yeah. that's what you said. And I think that's definitely true. But with this is what I started. And I've, I've brought this point up before. And it's something that I've been really thinking about for, you know, like over a year. And um, like, I remember when I first brought it up, I was talking to my friend, Sister Danger, and I was just articulating it. And she was like, I think I see what you're talking about. And I think that that's probably true. And what it is, is that, Feminist indoctrination, which of course is so pervasive that, you know, even people who think that they hate feminists and aren't a feminist themselves, they still believe most of it. You know, like you can mm -hmm. totally hate feminists and, you know, but, but then like you think that 60% of the things that they say are true. And then you actually really learn about it. And it's like, okay, 98% of them are untrue. Mm -hmm. And when, when, um, one of the big, 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 big pervasive things that has really kind of gotten into the heads of both men and women is that the be, due to feminism's um, demanding that men uh, sacrifice for the, you know to that that men have to serve women that men have to prioritize the needs of women. Um, or else they're horrible, horrible, horrible misogynist and, you know, or they'll get me too would or they like there's so much social pressure and downright authoritarian pressure to mm -hmm. kind of to kind of keep men in line that most men in, in Western places dare not even consider not being a uh, <laughs> what certain parts of the Internet would call a cuck you know they just it's just like they're completely whipped by the time they even reach puberty they they know what they they better do which is serve women mm -hmm. and i think that what one of the things that is a weird if like kind of side effect of that because this is slightly indirect is that it's made women believe that if men weren't forced to do that men wouldn't also want to just sort of do that because they're men and that's what men instinctively do women yeah. never get to even have the realization how about about how gynocentric men are because they're never given the option to be gynocentric they are forced to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well and I, th I think it's men's natural state to take care of women too i mean this is the reason why i think the idea of uh patriarchy is uh, so ridiculous in the way that feminists define it. Like if we're just talking about the simple definition, and this is something that I think I'd like to get into a little bit later is the left's uh, usage of words to get what they want. It's insane. Uh -huh. But if you look at the words as they are actually defined, uh, and you're just looking at patriarchy, which is basically, you know, that you can trace a lineage through the father because that's why, you know, um, a, a woman takes the last name of the man. You know, that's like that's about as patriarchal as it gets. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the feminist definition where it's essentially a system created by men to oppress women for the benefit of men. That is a ridiculous idea that has never existed and it doesn't exist anywhere in the world, even in the places where people think it actually does. Does. I think that there's no way that it works that way. And it's funny because this is men's natural state is to want to protect and provide for women in whatever way that women of that culture specifically ask. So, you know, if they, um, the more typically, if a society becomes more authoritarian, and more sort of top-down power, it's because the women in that society have started to ask for that. And the men generally give men, women what they want. And the ones that don't, they're the ones that are seen as the outcasts and the misogynists and stuff. So it's almost like, I mean, this is just the natural state of the, of the gender. That's why it's so hard, for example, to not only to get women to be men's rights advocates and to look at the issues, but it's really hard to get men to see it this way because they don't, they don't want to do that. They think, and feminists have everyone convinced, that railing against feminism equals railing against women. Yeah. Again, it goes back to that power over words thing. And men don't want to do that. They 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 really don't. So, you know, red pilling men is um is in its own way, it's harder than red pilling women because of that. Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely think that that's true in, in, in a lot of ways. Though it's I mean, I've I I did make a whole video called uh when um when rational women 
turn feminist and it's uh it's, mm. it's the idea that like you can you can have women who are actually pretty red pill but then the second they have a good reason you know it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. wait wait my husband my ex-husband isn't paying his child support on time i'm a fucking feminist is <laughs> so, oh why did yeah. i swear it's gonna be demonetized now so um yeah hey uh so space pan are you here yes i am here oh okay because i hadn't heard your voice I was just... i've just i've just been listening <laughs> oh, by the way, um, this guy, uh, mysterious senior Hitler, says, "I want to apologize for calling you a base fruit. That wasn't called for. You, you're still pretty base, though, and I really like your content. Well, that's really great, though. I can't really take that as much of a compliment, due to the fact that you have Hitler in your name. So you can go ahead and give me money and everything, but I can't say great." A guy um, with Hitler in his name is giving me no, money. No, it's Hilter. It's Hilter. Oh my God, you're right. Yeah, no, no, okay, never mind. Thank, thank you. I, I like. I love how I like just am being a dick to some guy <laughs> because I am dyslexic. <laughs> is it, um, um, it's easy to miss. Uh, is that even? Is that even insensitive though? Based fruit. I think that. No, I yeah. I was being a dick to him because I was like, oh god, okay, because occasionally there's people who like start leaving these comments that are all like just so you know i'm a total fascist and i like you prince of queens and it's just like oh <laughs> uh thanks but no thanks <laughs> you know like so um yeah that, that was kind of what i was was actually doing um but okay thank you for the five dollars so um yeah i i i I guess to get back to uh, what we were saying, the, the 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 notion that yeah, the men can't bring themselves to sign, you know, like once the dub, once the double, the, the one two punch of chivalry mixed with feminism is there, men think that they have to get hit twice, and they won't even consider being like, well, no, you only have to really get hit once. <laughs> I guess it's the best yeah. way to yeah. say it in a sentence. And I'm not saying, by the way, to be clear, I'm not saying that there could never be a scenario where men collectively couldn't oppress women or like put them in a situation where they, you know, would have to essentially like control them to get their way. But I don't think it's ever happened in history on a on a grand scale, uh, you know, like across a culture or a nation or something like that. It's never happened. But um yeah, that that's um, just to be just to sort of you know clear the air on that. Maybe under certain extra desperate circumstances, like if the you know the fate of the future of the human race depended on it, I'm pretty sure that men, if they needed to, would do that. Um, but women would probably be okay with it because I would imagine that they would also be interested in preserving the race, so or the 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 species to be more accurate. Yeah, yeah, I. Uh, um... mm -hmm. Yeah, like when the when the um in the disaster movie and the, the the airplane is falling and the woman is freaking out and she gets slapped and everybody's so yeah. shocked. Everybody's so shocked, but then she actually does calm down because everyone's like, "Oh wait, well no, it's true. Maybe we're all gonna die, and so you should stop being like that, and so that everyone can pay attention and do their jobs." Okay, okay. <laughs> like, yeah, like freaking out doesn't help. Um, I get it. You want to release, but uh, we can do that afterwards. Yeah. Take it, hit but, the head bag. I feel like that 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 thing that used to happen in disaster movies it's, it doesn't even happen anymore. Like the woman never even gets slapped in the movie anymore. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I feel like the status quo is that in that situation, if somebody were to like slap the woman, everyone would just look at them and be like, "Wow, wow, really?" And then like mm -hmm. there would be no conversation about the current apocalypse. They'd all be talking about like that was really unnecessary, right? You need to be oh, more yeah. sensitive and. <laughs> Yeah, the plane will be going down and fire and the wings are falling off and the people on the plane are going to be on their phones <laughs> on Twitter. Yeah, like, all, all of a sudden Anna has pictures and, what? you know. Sorry. Do we really need to slap the woman on the plane? With See, but, but by the time the plane hits the ground, before everyone dies in a fiery hellfire, uh, <laughs> everyone will be so woke, right? So, yeah, we'll be woke. Those are our priorities. <laughs> what will happen is... Anna Kasparian will walk out of the bathroom and be like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and if like we manage to land the plane safely and save everyone, everyone's lives and the person who slapped that woman 
that they caught was actually instrumental to like he went up and flew the plane and landed it they would still take away his job and ruin his life like, <laughs> yeah. you saved everyone but that's what you're supposed to be doing but what you should never do is slap a hysterical woman yeah don't they, even call her hysterical yeah, yeah westboro <laughs> baptist church at his funeral <laughs> Yeah. His, his name would be Trevor, the emergency landing wife beater. Or, <laughs> like, um, so, uh, Brian, okay, yeah. uh, now that you're on my turf, you mentioned one time, I think the first time that we talked, that you uh, used to work in theater and knew lots of gay guys. Yeah, I worked around a lot of that. I, I actually, most of my jobs, I, I at least was around one gay person because I, I remember mm. I worked in, um, I did work in a the theater for a while. I worked in the front, the box office part time while I was going to school. I also had a job where I worked in a greeting card store, and again, it was part time while I went to school. And there was, you know, gay managers and stuff like that. And then um, even like the 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 toughest job I ever had physically, which was like a, like an interior paint place that sold like paint and uh, like construction stuff. And there was one gay employee that I was the boss of. But yeah, so I've been around that a lot, sure. Hmm. Okay. Oh my God, I used to work part-time in a greeting card store during school also. Yeah. Maybe you were the, at the same store at the same <laughs> I was in Chicago, right in the Sears Tower lobby. Oh, so. wow. Well, the Willis Tower now. Sorry, but I still call it Sears Tower. Um, Willis Tower. So, what are what would say your what? Okay, one of the big things that we talk about here is like, um, so so what the thing about gay Cherokee? The thing about gay Cherokee to me, um, and I would say that Lordy is entirely on board with this. Um, Space Pound maybe not so much, but I feel like he has considered that this is a possibility, I guess is the best mm -hmm. way to say it. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, either guy, but um, is that we very, very, very much love gay men. Um, I think Space Pan thinks that most gay men are terrible. Um, mm -hmm. Now, I will fully admit, currently he's largely kind of right. We're not doing so good. Mm -hmm. not, not in a very good time period. But um, the sort of reason for gay triarchy existing is that the gay male community has been completely uh viciously mm -hmm. um hostile takeover from feminism and gay men yeah. entirely have stockholm syndrome um and so what has been your experience with gay men in terms of like being feminists and that kind of thing like do you were you aware of their beliefs around such a thing or um not uh okay well let me think i would say that okay so the gay men that i worked with most of them were were pretty out let's put it that <laughs> they were they were very out men but i i never really talked with them about politics at the time um so i don't know what their beliefs were we had a you know a purely professional workplace environment relationship um but they were very out and the reason why i say that is because i also used to live in a gay neighborhood predominantly because i wanted to live close to my job and uh i found this apartment in it was basically like two blocks away from a neighborhood called boys town in chicago um and i would i would it was convenient because where I worked, it was about two hours from the uh, place I used to live at. And I would see gay men all, all the time, like with gay people, period, but mostly gay men, because Boys Town is predominantly gay males that are living there. And what, one of the things that I noticed, and this isn't really about the politics or whatever, but one of the things that I noticed about gay men is most of them are not what you think of when people typically think of gay men or gays in general where they're kind of really you know expressive like the gay men are really flamboyant or the 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 lesbians are really you know kind of like wearing their flannel shirts and smoking cigarettes or whatever it is that lesbians do and it was mostly just like they were just like regular guys that just had jobs and you know and they just wanted to essentially live their gay lifestyle uh but there were and then i'll give you an example of why i believe that is the case with my um with where i lived uh we would have the gay pride parade every year in that neighborhood and the thing is when it came came to the gay pride parade um 
the people who were the most annoyed by it because it was it would create cr traffic jams and it was really noisy and loud and you know just like really really out there in terms of like people dressing up in leather and just getting getting all down and you know being really like um i don't even know what the word i don't want to say degenerate because i think that's too negative but i guess i'm just saying really horrible yeah, really deplorable, right? Lots of sexual deviancy going on and this kind of thing. The thing is, is the people who were the most annoyed with the gay pride parade were the gays that lived in the neighborhood. They actually didn't want it there because they wanted to live mostly a quiet lifestyle, mainly because I think it had to do with age because the, uh, the neighborhood was pretty high end because gays that are, um, they, they tend, I think that they tend to be in the highest, um, sort of middle in the middle class they have like the highest uh you know um they, they make they make good money because they don't have women that they're paying for like mm -hmm. this is what the truth of it is two men that get together they both have jobs and so they can afford to put their incomes together and work together and they make good money and so mm -hmm. These were, and then they'd be older, like in their middle age or whatever. And so they were kind of over the partying thing and they just had their partner. And that was the majority of people who lived in that neighborhood. So the thing that I found that's interesting, I guess what I'm getting at is, is that younger gay men tended to be more like activists at the time where they would have like this, they really needed you to know that they were gay and that, you know, no matter like how like indifferent you were, cause I was always indifferent. Like, I don't care, you know, whatever. I don't, it's not my business what you do at your, you know, in your bedroom or whatever with who, but they, they, it wasn't enough that you were indifferent or sort of passively supportive that you needed to be actively supportive and celebrate them for it. But as they got older, they usually like got over that and they were just like, I just want to be left alone with my husband or boyfriend or whatever. And they actually, I noticed that older gay men tend to get really irritated with the activist younger gay men. And this is because I don't, I haven't lived in that neighborhood for many years. But this is um, way before the kind of activist left pushed gay men out of essentially pushed gay men out of that hierarchy completely, and they are considered to be the uh, <laughs> the white people of gay people essentially. <laughs> oh yeah, no, yeah, no. They uh, leftists hate gay white men more mm -hmm. than more than they hate anyone. Like we are persona non grata in all of the left um by the way i just realized we only have uh six thumbs up but there's 28 people watching what is that what is that come on guys come on thick more more okay but <laughs> if i left maybe you guys would get more likes no 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 they're here for, they're here for you they're here for you mm -hmm. um but no okay so um as for the thing that you were saying about um gay men being as they get older being less activisty i think that really might depend on where you are and i think that my yeah. co my co -host i don't know for sure this is just like where i am in chicago uh, yeah I, I will say this too it doesn't mean that they're not feminists it just means that they're less likely they they have a lower tolerance for the noise and you know the flamboyancy and stuff well but okay this is what i would say this is what i'd say um, I think my co-hosts know that I have a three-word response to what you're saying, which okay. contradicts what you're saying. And I want them to try to guess what it is. Think of older gay men, activism, lordy, space pan. What's my little catchphrase? Oh, what was it? It was um, homosexual moth no, women. No, no, shut up, shut up. No. <laughs> You know, Chadwick always says that it's my favorite term. It's the, it's the favorite term of mine that I've coined. Do you guys not remember? No, it's gay church lady. Yes, thank church you. Church lady, yeah, 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 yeah. I <laughs> yeah. thought we already said that. <laughs> no. So I thought it was obvious, so I was making like a like a joke, like by <laughs> the synonyms. But... Yeah, the gay church lady is perfect. I grew up in the church. It's a perfect excuse. Yeah. Okay. Now, in fairness. Yeah, but the young guys kind of are like the gay church ladies, you know? Like, I, there's a whole kind of like 2.0. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's weird. It's this weird thing. But 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 here's the thing. I don't think that many of the of the young guys are gay church. I mean, there's definitely some, um, especially the ones that are HIV positive and they become like mm. HIV po HIV activists and stuff. They mm. become like gay church ladies before they're 30. Um, but uh the thing the, the the this this thing of the gay church lady i did i didn't notice a whole lot of them in new york like you meet older gay guys in new york and they're yeah. just they're just like i own a gallery and you're a young hipster you're not invited you're not invited mm -hmm. um and mm -hmm. it, it would be they're more know, elitist yeah. yeah yeah and they'd be like you could be you could come you could like bartend the party. That'd be, I mean, you're mm -hmm. cute. <laughs> you know, <like> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you can suck my dick if you want to. <laughs> um, but the, the the gay church lady is this thing that okay in fucking San Francisco they're everywhere. Mm -hmm. they, <laughs> they they if you go to the Castro and you see you know the guys who actually own houses in the Castro, which is. Sure. A, there's a lot of them. They're mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. aging gay guys who like used to be some sort of activist, like act up queer. Yeah. Like he's like a lawyer or some sort of. They got famous. They wrote a book about their activism and they something. like are the, the, the leaders of the pride parade. Yeah. There's, there's, they're like the grand marshal or the honor mm -hmm. or, or they, they have this whole like hierarchy and they, it's like the, they're, I, their entire identity, even still, even still, mm -hmm. it's based around HIV and AIDS activism, generally mm -hmm. from the, from the 80s and 90s, and like mm -hmm. one of their claims to fame for like you know for the last like for for the entire year, the coolest thing that happened is that Nancy Pelosi showed up to one of their parties for about 15 minutes, and they're like, oh my god, oh my god, Nancy Pelosi, because mm -hmm. her her original thing was she was like the first um, HIV act and AIDS advocate. Um, mm -hmm. who came from San Francisco. So there is these older guys who are, and, and they are the ones that are um, like, so so many of the gay guys, at least in California, at least in San Francisco. And I know that these guys are in LA too. And I know that there are some in, in New York. I just didn't really run into them much. Um, they not only peer pressure, but they demand that the younger guys that are around them be like this. Like they're like, don't forget your history. The Republicans are bathing in blood every night because mm -hmm. I buried so many of my friends. And if you ever, ever consider being a Republican and it's just, it's this like psycho ass attitude. But I can also understand that it comes from a, a, a place of genuine trauma that like they did see their friends, like, you know, wither away and die and nobody cared for years. And so I can understand how that would be really, really hard to get over. But um, not every gay guy is like that. I think that they are in certain cities. Is mm -hmm. Yeah, I will. I can give an example of uh, an egregious example of a, of a recent uh, encounter I had with uh, involving something like activism uh, in the gay community. So when I worked in the theater and it was 2015, Trump wasn't elected yet, but he was on the campaign trail. I, I don't know if it was 2015, I think it was 2015 or 2016 when this happened. He was supposed to come to Chicago. Now, I don't know if you guys um, followed the, you know, any of this stuff involving uh, Trump's campaign trail and stuff, but he was supposed to come to Chicago and it was actually the one place the one place that he wasn't able to go and they had to cancel because of the amount of danger, the enormous amounts of riots that were going on and, and protests. There was a massive group of people that the claim was that they were going to hurt him. And so because he had the, there was genuine concern for his safety, he didn't actually end up coming here, even though he intended to. Do you guys oh. know? I thought if I thought it would have been that if he came over there, then it would have turned into Trump country, and then yeah. everybody would have beaten uh, Jesse. Yeah, would have <laughs> yeah, become mega country. He was trying so to make your sandwiches would still be safe. Yes, <laughs> but I, I don't get it. Is that a Miss Midwest joke? 
the sandwich? No, it's because Jesse Smollett. Oh, no, the subway sandwich. And for some reason, it was it was safe after mm -hmm. everything was over. Nothing happened to the sandwich. Um, mm -hmm. So he fought a guy off, or two guys, two buff guys off, while holding a, his subway sub because he had to keep that sub. I just find it strange. Like, if you make that much money, why the fuck would you go to Subway? That the, their sandwiches are shit. I don't understand that. But anyway, because it's the only thing that's open when no one's going to witness you faking mm -hmm. a crime. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, yeah, I guess that. so. You can go to Subway. I like Subway. Got a bunch of hangers. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when he was coming to Chicago, he it was supposed to be that night. Okay, I was working in the theater, and my boss. This is the weirdest thing, okay? My boss, who was gay, approached me, and my uh, immediate supervisor, who was a woman, a uh, lesbian, I'm not a lesbian, I'm sorry, she was a feminist, whatever, same difference. But uh, she, they approached me, and they asked, I guess they were asking everyone, in the in the show, like all the actors, people who worked in the um, in the uh, music department, the sound people, etc., if they were going to go that night with them as a group to uh, essentially protest the president. And they were trying to make it mandatory, but they couldn't really make it mandatory, but they were saying, what are you gonna do tonight? You're gonna go, are you gonna go to the to the rally? Are you gonna protest the president? And I was like, I didn't have plans on anything but going home. Cause I was like, I had homework and other shit to do. And, um, and I was like, mm, I don't know, maybe like, I didn't really know how to answer this question. Cause when your boss asks you something like that, it's just, you know, I wasn't really sure what to say, but, but uh, they, the, my, I remember because my bosses, who were, it was a gay couple that owned the theater, they were certain that Trump was going to do something to them, like take something away from gay people, even though he's been the only president in history that's been in support of same sex marriage and uh, wanted to protect the LGBTQ community from the beginning. Yeah, well, the, but even be. You know, even before he decided he was going to run, he was pro-gay. Yeah. He was originally, this, this is something that I didn't understand until I actually dated a gay Republican over the summer. And Those um, don't exist. What are you talking about? There are no <laughs> it's just like a black Republican. Those well, are the, It was actually really weird because I live in Seattle and mm -hmm. I, um, a friend of mine had a little get together at his house because he decided that he didn't, he couldn't deal with SJWs anymore. And he was like, who do I know who is kind of like that? And he thought of me and um, he thought of a few other people. And then, so we went over and uh, the, the, this, this, this guy was there and I, um, he kissed me at one point and then we sort of started dating, you know? And um, when, uh, and he's, he's a good guy, like I'm still friends with him, but um, mm -hmm. he explained to me that, uh, Trump was brought to the Republican Party because he had been a Democrat, and then um, Trump hated Obama a lot um, for for good reasons. I mean, Obama is shady, but um, I mean, I don't I don't know. You know, I'm not going to be like one of the birth certificate guys because I just don't know about that. Like, I'm not going to get. But there there's plenty of really good reasons to always have hated Obama. Like he, he was a shady, shady dude I mean, with, with ties to the far, far, far com like, you know, post communist ass left like that, you know? So, but, um, so, so Trump kind of like started turning against the democratic party. And then, um, in 2011 at CPAC, um, a gay group called go proud who was, had close ties, I, I guess the people that they, were friends with who were major players in like Republican politics were like Andrew Breitbart and Ann Coulter were their friends. And if you, you know, obviously Ann Coulter is actually like, she'd probably be a really funny person to hang out with and get drunk, you know? <laughs> and, and Breitbart, Breitbart was like, man, if you can imagine like after partying with that dude, like that would have been fun. Like just, I mean, and, and not even in terms of like, Oh, I agree with all of his politics. Like, no, he just was obviously a fun dude. Like, mm -hmm. if you watch his speeches, mm -hmm. like, I had no idea that he was like, he would be so obviously not the type of guy that would give a crap if you're gay. And mm -hmm. he'd be like, oh, cool, cool. Um, do you know to where you get any blow? And I'd be like, oh, mm -hmm. well, no, I don't do that anymore. Damn. You know, like, that's what he would have been like. And so, mm -hmm. um, Trump came from that faction of like new republicans you know and um 
and then and then Chadwick told me, which I didn't know, was that uh, Trump's mentor was a gay guy who died of AIDS. Mm -hmm. And so, yep. so, the guy, so the guy who was like a, a, a better businessman in like whenever they probably that makes I don't know. perfect sense why he never talks about it like that because it's like a place of respect for him yeah, yeah. it's yeah. like that's going to come across as really shallow virtue signaling so we can avoid getting getting put in uh getting slandered and it wouldn't actually do anything because the media is going to twist it anyways into something it's there's no point in trying to appease you know appease yeah. people so it's really interesting because in the state of the union he made a very clear declaration that they would find a cure for hiv aids within the next 10 years which really stood out to me i think a lot of people missed that and within weeks of that statement you know in the media recently there's been multiple reports of now what three or four people who have successfully um had bone marrow transplants and um eliminated the hiv virus from their oh systems. but but don't you know that curing aids is racist <laughs> yeah that was their identity <laughs> Trump has taken that from them. Is, is is that a joke though? I I I don't know if that is that real. That that um, the, well, I'm sorry. I'm, I think we're talking. Okay, I saw a a screenshot uh, meme thing the other day, and I shared it on my Facebook page, and it showed Trump talking about how great it was that I guess they got like the second person that's been you know seen as pr cured of mm -hmm. aids and then immediately following that was like a, a, a screenshot of a cnn um a cnn article or maybe it was bbc i can't remember what what's the difference that said uh why i think it was like oh, why this is bad because um i'll i'll, I'll tell you in a second i'm gonna find it because I, I think i do i do it justice okay well i, I, do that. Wait, I saw that tweet i remember how, yeah how a cure for hiv would be bad hiv would be bad for aids charities and um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the gay church ladies are shaking in their boots. Yeah. Um, but um, okay, if you want to dig it up, you can. Uh, because I did get a super chat. Um, so Deadwin Aether says, um, he has been indicted by a grand jury. Of course, talking about Jesse Smollett, who or Jossie. Mm -hmm. Um, and mm -hmm. yes. Uh, but apparently, I I think that his statement was, well, at least they caught the attackers. <laughs> <laughs> Rats, Jesse, you just put three more black guys in jail. You've contributed. <laughs> but what what I think is gonna be really awesome about this is like, no, this is not really awesome. I mean, but just wait for the this to be, you know, like never spoken of again. Like by you know, like mm -hmm. the left is just gonna pretend that this just doesn't matter that this doesn't happen often that this is just one bad apple and blah 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 oh, no for I sure. um I, I, can i say something to this real quick i yeah. i um i think so i've been thinking a lot about the way that the left operates and when i say that i'm talking about progressives and sjw's but i'm just gonna say the left, and I'm going to keep saying that until reasonable people on the left move away from it and distance themselves from this. But um, they, you know, one would think that this should wake people up that are either moderate or left of center or, you know, even like somewhat far left, that there's something wrong with um, the state of, I guess, our political discourse on what is uh, what is a hate crime, what the idea of a hate crime is, when it's actually being committed, and so on. It's just one of many other things. Just issues within the conversation around this whole oppression narrative and all of this uh, victim victim cred stuff. And I don't think it's going to work because I um, I think that when people do that, they do it. Stuff like Jesse Smollett, they they do it because yes, they want sympathy, they want attention, they want to try to use it to boost their uh, popularity. Some people do it so they can become e famous. You know that happens a lot where uh, regular people who are who come from little, like they live poor or or they're uh, lower class or working class, and and they have like a social encounter, and it's with a man or it's with a white person or whatever, and they can use that to like boost 
boost their their victim status by taping it on their phone and then cutting it out of context and putting it on the internet and then it gets them a lot of attention and but i also think that there is a real cause to believe that the people who do these things that create these hoaxes and it's very common i think there are more hate crime hoaxes than oh, hate yeah. crimes oh, to yeah. Be oh yeah and um yeah, was, was there a single trump inspired hate crime no, that wasn't no, a hoax that you can think of because i really can't and no, I, I feel like i should be able to think about no, there was a guy who shot up that uh, Jewish temple or whatever it was. And he hated Trump, and then there, there yeah, that wasn't a Trump guy though, exactly. And you know? and and there was a yeah, no, he thought that Trump was like a Zionist or something. Yeah, yeah, and then, yeah. And then there was, I guess, some guy who like stabbed some immigrants in Portland who <laughs> was a Trump supporter, but it did. Like it didn't seem like he was like this is Trump country. It was more like he was like ah, I'm on PCP or something. Like, like, <laughs> yeah, <maybe. laughs> but like the, 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 but what I think they do with these hate crime hoaxes is they are convinced that these things really happen and that they have actually experienced it themselves. But because they they want to bring attention to something that they believe is real, they, they make a theatrical version of it up in some way where they exaggerate. I mean, they obviously lie to, to start off, but they even exaggerate what's happening. You know, when they like spray paint swastikas in the bathroom or out of poop, or they, um, you know, do all kinds of shit to themselves or have things done to them or they create the the mm. um uh, conditions necessary to make it like a hate crime and then they put it out there and then even if they're caught they believe that what they did was right because they're trying to draw attention to an issue that they think is real and so mm -hmm. even the fake like i think jesse smollett probably did it mainly because he thought it would uh, give him a boost in popularity and then that would result in probably better work or something, you know, but yeah. I, uh, but ultimately though, he probably has convinced himself. And I think that this happens a lot on the left, that this is a real issue that happens to real people because the media has told me many, many times over and over. And yeah. all I'm doing is creating a scenario to show you what kind of stuff happens, even though there's absolutely no evidence that shows that that, ever happens on a scale that is remotely important enough for the, that we need to talk about it uh, as a hate yeah. crime. Yeah, okay. I think, and, and I, I haven't like said this before, I just sort of, when you were talking, I started just about it. something, something clicked. Um, I think that one of the things that must be going on, okay, for, for one, the, the biggest thing is that like, I don't think that there's ever going to be hate crimes again in the same way that there used to be post mm -hmm. the uh camera phone social media era like we're just not going to get those things oh, yeah. like that, that we used to yeah. because it like everybody's like there's been so many examples of um mob justice about these mm -hmm. things that mm -hmm. it just I, I and and also even even just saying the wrong thing you know like even oh, if yeah. you don't even if you don't become like posted on gawker and your life is ruined by like you know uh justine sacco or whatever like even if that doesn't happen you still see it happening in your social circle where you know like the the black trans girl that is like super sjw that everybody knows decides that she's gonna like plaster all over facebook and tagging all of her friends that supposedly someone's a white supremacist because he called somebody a kang or something you know like some stupid crap like that and and everybody is has seen that happen and so like people's you know the whole big brother syndrome is like it's it's it, it hit hard enough to change the social landscape but i think more important than that is that everybody remembers the pre um the pre the the, the era before when all of a sudden the you know the era when the only thing on television that was like gay was Will and Grace and Queer as Folk, not Queer as Folk, yeah, Will and Grace, Queer as Folk, and Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. Well, and, what about, uh, Six Feet Under? Wasn't that pretty gay? I never yeah, saw it, it. It, it, it was kind of. It was there was a, a gay man. Place it wasn't Melrose Place, the place that did it, that they did it first, I think. First, yeah, but that was such a B show. Yes. And okay, but that and was, the L word can't forget the L word. 
<laughs> okay. Uh -huh. so, well, and also the real world, but um, uh -huh. but that stuff was it was so it was like very niche, you know. It was it was few and far between, and it was the 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 dominant cultural narrative was still like, oh, gay guys are funny, you know, like that was kind of right. was like Will and Grace. Yeah, like like you know um yeah yeah, yeah. Jack. It was, like, it was like a pet. They still do that in Hollywood. It was yeah. like it's like having a chihuahua that does cute things, and you just want to show people. <laughs> They still yeah. do that with gay men. They're really, really stereotyped. Yeah, they, they they do. And like, you know, I mean, to a certain degree, it's not entirely untrue. You know, like there are those guys. Like you go oh, out yeah, to a gay, sure. a gay bar and like those there's drag queens who even if they're not dressed up, they're, they're you know, like acting like that. Yeah. What but, about just men in feather boas that wear like sequins, you know, like suit jackets though? Or like, I, like, the, like the Rip Taylor style? Yeah, like those guys. <laughs> like I, I, there was a show... Uh, I saw, I, I used to have a Netflix account before I got tired of their bullshit and canceled them. Um, there was a show on there. I can't remember it now, but it was like some woman's comedy show. I never watched it, but like it kept showing up as a thing that Netflix really wanted me to see for some reason, even though I had no interest in it because their algorithm was just jacked, but it was a Netflix original anyway. There was like a white woman and her best friend who was another woman. And then there was like their gay black friend. And I can't remember the name of the show. Oh my God. No, I know what it was. Yes, Unbreakable Kenny oh, yeah, yeah, It was yeah. so awful. It was the most horrible show. It was like, okay, that show and then Master of None were like the most critically acclaimed shows that were absolute garbage of all time. Like they were so terrible. Yeah, so you know what I'm talking about. And that I actually like that show. I, just I thought Kimmy Schmidt was image. okay. I never saw it, but um, just based on what I saw, I was like, I, I knew immediately. I was like, "That's the gay friend, isn't it?" But it was I, I was always, fine. I was still fine with like SJW ish things and blah 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 during that. Time. I didn't even think about how f feminist that show is like supposed to be in theme, but I, I it was just bad. It was just a really really bad show. Mm -hmm. But um, wait, I was I was saying something a while. Uh, we got to oh about all the hate crime. Um, yeah, the hate crime. Thing. So I think that what is kind of probably going on here is that with um, okay, now granted, with Muslims and um, you know that you know Latino person that claims someone in a pickup truck drove by and said this is Trump country two weeks before the midterms or whatever. Um. Yeah. And that's a true story. I actually knew somebody, a friend of a friend, totally s said that that happened to her, and 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 made a copy and paste thing that was uh, spread around Facebook. And you know, it's like, oh, ooh, that's funny that that happened. Um, and you know, no evidence, just text. Uh, two weeks before the midterms, but with those people, it's like, okay, I can see there is an ulterior motive to just lie. You know, like, oh, I'm a Muslim. My hijab was somebody poured ketchup all over my hijab. I'm, oh no, um, and, <laughs> put him in jail. <laughs> yeah, um, this will never come out. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I think that with gay men, and there's been a lot of gay men who have done this, um, th this Trump hate crime thing. Even and in, 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 it's has to be. That. Yeah, there's been a number. Like there was a gay guy, a gay guy who was like a makeup artist, like a special effect makeup artist who faked his hate crime in LA. Um, yeah, and, on um, on election night, he's he, like got into a fight with people at a bar, and like I think actually Blair White did a video about it. Like, oh, I think I know, I think I know that one. Yeah, didn't he like yeah. do makeup to make it look like he was cut really deep or something like that? Yeah, yeah, I think that's what it was. And um, there's the Jesse Smollett, and um, I. I don't know. Well, there was the lesbian who burned her house down, but I don't know if that was actually a tr supposed to be a Trump thing. Um, there was a there was a story in the paper um, with a, a, a tattoo shop that's owned by some gay guys, and it's actually within walking distance from my house in Seattle. Mm -hmm. And I can assure you, there's not like actual homophobic people where I'm, I'm at. I mean, it's not like a gay neighborhood, but um, nobody. And and also I don't even know how they would know they were, that that person is gay. Like I walk by that tattoo shop, nobody would know that it's like they're they're gay. Um, but supposedly like somebody left a note on the door. This is Trump country now, and um, I, that that was never like officially filed as like a false thing. But like it had to be fake. Like they had to have done that yeah. themselves. What I think it is is that gay guys remember this the pre um. 
the era when it was still like completely socially acceptable to like just be mean to gay guys and make fun of gay guys and they're and okay gay gay guys getting beat up and mugged walking home from bars will never go away like and and they are targeted because they are gay and the reason why is because gay guys do that commonly um they go out they have money on them they get drunk and then they walk home because gay guys usually live close enough to where they're going to be going out in bars mm -hmm. and that's a very common thing so muggers look for that and um it's not exactly a hate crime but they are being targeted because they're a drunk gay guy coming home from a bar and so mm -hmm. that's it's it's a weird thing but i think that gay guys remember this era of like you know the 90s and last decade um especially the earlier parts of last decade when it yeah. it, it was pretty crappy to be a gay guy and like it, it i mean 90s especially and people associate that with republicans and especially it it was so easy to associate that with bush because he was actively campaigning to try to put it as a constitutional amendment that gay guys should never get married like that it was so obviously antagonistic towards gays and so i think that um after bush things i mean by the end of bush things were getting better for gay guys like he stopped talking about that by after the 2004 campaign he wasn't even, even really talking about it much anymore um and by the end of last decade it, things were generally fine and then it was like we had a black president and it changed the way people thought about all bigotry it was like well maybe we shouldn't be mean to gay guys because maybe they'll be in charge someday <laughs> you know <laughs> I, I guess and um things changed so much and i think that then the left started getting really 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 abusive but guys had stockholm syndrome because i mean le the left was abusive to gay guys during obama like it was yeah. around uh, 2014 was the turning point when they were just like you know what actually we hate you and you're a racist and misogynist and you need mm -hmm. to like let women you need to let women take over the bars or we mm. are going to ruin you and we're going to throw you out of your own yeah. organization. All of a sudden, gay men were racist. I was like, what the fuck? When did that happen? Yeah. Oh, is it because um, you you didn't date uh, black guys enough or something? Or, or, yeah, or, or a preference. Yeah, or, or if you date them too much, you better not do that. Oh, or, then you're a fetishist. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, you couldn't win. It was per, per, oh, that was the other thing I was going to talk about. Uh, the the left's um, attacks towards gay men and, and why I think that they are. Um, but so guys, things got better for gay guys. And, but then the left themselves started being the culprits of the homophobia and or or the anti-gay bigotry, like both homophobia in saying that gay guys were groping women all the time, which they say. <laughs> like that's a very common statement now um and then also the um just the general anti you know gay guys are um racist and they're selfish and blah 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 blah. Uh, yeah aren't you guys also evil for not having if, like if you aren't into trans women yeah yeah um, oh no yeah. No, no, no if if we're not into trans men trans yeah, men female yeah. to male and or non-binary fucking females that get a short mm. haircut we should be having sex with them too um mm. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it's this really, really weird thing. And, um, but I think that gay guys, um, started doing the, the gay guys who weren't like myself. And, you know, by, by the end of 2015, I was like, this is no, I can't even pretend that I'm with you guys anymore. And, um, you know, I liked Bernie Sanders cause he wasn't playing the identity politics cards last mm -hmm. election now he is but um I, I i was like i thought that i had to vote for democrats and he wasn't playing identity politics but everybody else was like everybody else i knew I, you know every leftist was just like black lives matter uh i stand for lgbt rights i mean t rights i mean you know and it was like bad but they hate gay men like what about that and um but i think that because the the gay guys that had twisted their own minds and you know with their little stockholm syndrome into believing that the left was still the good guys and that no matter how much the left was abusing them their their demographic as in you know like the the gay men um 
they 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 still found a way to believe that the left was the good guys. Um, they start needing to believe for their own self esteem that that Trump and the Republicans are going to be worse because mm. in order in order to believe that they did the right thing by choosing the people that were mentally and you know mm. yeah actively mentally harming them which mm. would be the left they need to believe that Trump is worse mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? Right, well, and it's an extreme well, worse. Like, yeah, but the Mike Pence thing is often like the tool that's used, if not Trump himself. Um, and that I think is the way that they do put, they make uh, most gays afraid of the Trump administration. Is basically they use the they talk about Pence, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, but they, it just kind of reveals their hand and like how little they have to go on. It's such a reach. They're like mm -hmm. the Vice President Mike Pence said something that what was it um electroshock therapy might be useful and people might want it and it should maybe be available right it's like yeah, yeah there so are many there, tears I mean, away I mean, from being relevant he yeah did, you guys he heard did. all the mike pence jokes like about that like oh yeah yeah the, the, oh, i the, love the, it it's great yeah, there, there are a lot of good memes about that but um i mean he did say some pretty bad things in the early 2000s like i started looking sure. um looking it up but what? i mean but but in okay. fairness when is the last time that he's ever opened his mouth since? Yeah, and uh, but also more importantly, this is this is getting to the thing that I've been thinking a lot about. There is okay. More importantly, what is worse, uh, having someone that says that they disagree with your lifestyle? And they and they, they they might even have really bad opinions on it, but they don't actually want to take away your rights. They don't want to destroy your life. In fact, like let's say uh, you know, love the, love the sinner, hate the sin. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. You might say exactly like a like a Christian um, mm. fundamentalist like a, might say. Well, that's like Ben Shapiro. Yeah, right. Like I disagree with it, and I, I'm afraid you're gonna go to you know you're gonna burn in hell or whatever. But I'll pray for you. But that's it. They don't actually say. And so we must make it legal. And so we must do something to you. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's the reason why I thought it was. I think it's interesting to bring up is because uh, okay. So obviously I would disagree with the sentiment, but I don't think that the sentiment alone is something that you should be afraid of uh, necessarily. Right? Wait, sorry, what what sentiment? Mm -hmm. The sentiment that, like, perhaps they think that because you're living a life of sin as a gay man, that you're going to burn in hell, oh, and they right. think that you should, but they're not going to, they're not actually doing anything to you. They're just saying that. It's like the the Westboro Baptist Church. You know, they might say God hates, you know, fat. Oh no, well, no, but they were very, very, uh, like disruptive and horrible. Like they, yeah, they, I know, but like, but they, they, but they would, they would go to like people's funerals and sure. like. Yeah, they go to the funerals of veterans, and I know, I know they were terrible people, and I, I, you know, but they are often used as an example of what, uh, you know, what, what yeah, what, what represents Christians, do. yeah, what represents Christians, what they can do. But what, what I'm getting at is, is that as as horrible as they are, and as disruptive as they are, they even if that's an extreme example, I'll say that's an extreme example for sure. They never got violent. To my knowledge, they never, um, you know, went and uh, insisted or they didn't have the power to do it, even if they wanted to, uh, that, you know, we should change the laws, that we should send police to your house, that we should do something to you. And it's interesting because groups like Antifa, for example, um, they are violent. They will go and attack people in mobs. It's a And, and yeah. the reason I bring it up is because this is the thing about the left that I, I think is interesting. It's their their view on words they believe that words are the same as violence mm -hmm. are the same so mm -hmm. if you say something to them that they disagree with or even find disgust mm -hmm. disgusting mm -hmm. because the left mm -hmm. tends to have a, a strong disgust response to uh words that they find problematic whether you're using foul language like if you're calling someone a fag or 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 mm -hmm. the n-word or whatever mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. think that res um because words are violence to them mm -hmm. because words mm -hmm. have that much power then responding with physical violence is the right way to go forward so mm -hmm. they equate those things and it's i think it's because 
they recognize this is why they have uh, the people who that are sort of more like academics in that, like uh, you take a Michael Eric Dyson, for example, or uh, a feminist person like uh, Lori Penny um, or Clementine Ford or what or Naomi Wolf, whatever. Take your pick. They they have. Um, a lot of power in terms of their usage of words. They control language. The left is really big on controlling language. How many new genders and uh, you know states of oppression did a uh, Tumblr come up with? They they're making up new things, and then people think that this is silly stuff. Like I, I just saw. Uh, um, and I'm sorry for taking up so much time, but I just saw a uh, a podcast where someone was asking someone else. Um, Karen was on, and, and this person was asking Karen, uh, "What do you think about the social justice stuff? It seems like it's kind of died off. Like you know, no nobody's really like you know talking about it on the internet that much anymore." And basically, he was saying, "I've lost interest in in this topic, and so therefore, I don't think it's important." But what he doesn't realize is, is that when we used to point and laugh at the stuff that they put on Tumblr, like all the genders and these social construct ideas and all this intersectional feminist shit it's actually made its way into the mainstream culture it's in the news media it's in um it's in like it's they're passing laws based on this stuff like there's something in in canada there's some bill or something that may have even gone through i don't know but it's definitely being proposed at like the highest levels of their government that if you don't um, what is it? If you don't chemically transition your child, if they feel like they're they are another gender, then they will step in and do it for you. Jesus, so this is yeah, this is like a real thing that's happening, right? You know, I, you know what's really funny about that is um, uh, two things. Oh, wait, like for one, I've, I've I've been having for weeks now. I swear this has been going on for over a week. Some little fifteen year old girl showed up to my video called boycott they them pronouns and which the point of the video is i think that the best way to deal with these people is not to just you know refuse to uh use their you know like call them he or she mm -hmm. um because like people who say that they're non-binary and that they have no no gender at all literally nobody has no gender at all you look at somebody mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's it's basically everybody you've ever seen in your life you could you see them as one way or the other so mm -hmm. unless they tell you which one you know like if, if they tell you hey i know that i look kind of manly but i'm transitioning you know like okay fine i'll call you a she whatever that's fine but um if, if they're like i'm a they and it's like no you're a chick mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. if it, but if they if they pull that crap just say um i am not going to have any relationship with you i i don't mm -hmm talk to people that are like you so bye and i am like yeah boycott and so so and so many little like <laughs> 15 year old girls have shown up to the comment section in that video and been like how dare you blah blah blah, blah. and I, we just want to be ourselves and i'm like that's fine go ahead and do that yeah. I, i'm just not going to be friends with you and then they keep commenting and i'm like i don't know i mean you can go away like i like do you want to be friends with me really bad and they're like no but ah, and it's like well yeah <laughs> you kind of like you want to be my friend or or maybe yeah, you want me to be your therapist or something. Um, <laughs> and exhibiting uh, the very thing I'm talking about, you see, it's yeah. not enough that you accept them like or leave them alone in their delusion or whatever they, they want you to con convert they, you yes you they need you to validate them it's like yeah, it's, they, they need it and, and they yeah, yeah yeah and exactly and so so that is that's why i bring that up and then also something that i found very very interesting so benjamin boyce um friend of mine who's a really good youtuber and uh he's he's yeah, really, i want to get yeah. him on sometime but go, i'm sorry go ahead um yeah he's the evergreen college guy and uh he's been doing this great great thing that's going to serve as an invaluable resource for youtubers and maybe academics and everybody for for a long time is that what he's he's doing a series of like uh, pretty much all of his videos over the past like month or even month and a half or two um and he does this multiple times a week has it's like been this like series of interviews with transgender people that um he feels are dissidents in some way in general um and so he's talked to a number of people who have detransitioned he just got you know how there was like a person in portland oregon who was like or, or like Oregon at least who's the first person to have uh, a you know to to have on their ID non-binary mm -hmm. do you remember that mm -hmm. I remember that yep yeah yeah so that. he talked to that person and did an interview about how they're detransitioning 
Detransitioning? Yeah, that person who is non-binary was on hormones, apparently went off of them, and Benjamin has an interview with them. I haven't had a chance to oh, watch it yet, but isn't that interesting? Yeah, yeah, that is interesting. Because, like, this whole thing has affected it's it's affecting children. It, act, it really? uh, active, mm -hmm. actively is. And the children are like absolutely hysterical about it. Like they are seeking out arguments that they cannot win. You know, like with a guy like me, you know, like I the, the last thing I said to this chick, this little 15 year old, I mean, she's probably responded, you know, like by now, but it didn't notify me. But the last thing I said was like, I was like, you know, I'm really glad that you're not my niece because I would make you cry mm -hmm. every holiday on mm -hmm. um, because like I like you've allowed your all everybody close to you to bully you into or sorry you've allowed you've bullied everybody around you into you know following your little teenage girl orders and somehow they're like all afraid to defy you but I wouldn't be and I would make you cry um you know and <laughs> that was the last thing I told her and uh and and then they've substantiated it into law and you know Bill C sixteen there's there is the um yep. that's there and people try to say it's not what it is but it's like no there is this really definitely creepy thing going on and we yeah. know for a fact that like the non-binary the only non-binary person that came out and and they used as their like shining example of progression was like actually never mind i'm, I'm not non-binary <laughs> yeah, yeah. that is interesting i want to i want to say something about that too this is why i think this is scary um and this goes back to what i was talking about on the left the left has this 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 stranglehold over words and they keep adding new words and they change the definitions of words. I mean, I can go through a- Or, or just blatantly use list. words incorrectly. Yeah, but they but they but they do it over and over and over until it becomes the way that we use words. Like that's 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 the point. It's to change language. It's it's essentially breaking down uh so much that we have a really hard time communicating with each other about really simple things. So people have to specify, or at least they would be expected to specify the difference between sex and gender. Then they have to include non-binary people, which is something that they made up. These are all made up. A lot of these are just made up words or made up meanings for words. And then you have to start thinking, oh, and if you try to argue against that, then they bring in interest sex people which is such an amazingly small per it's the same as a person that's born with like a limb missing or something but yeah, no I, i've met them i've met them and they all yeah. moved to san francisco because they're so rare and they run in in queer circles in the san francisco area and they will admit quicker than anybody that they're extremely rare and that it's really really exciting yeah. when they ever meet another intersex person yeah, yeah, but th this is just, but it's so, despite the fact that it's so unusual that we should just treat it as an outlier, they insist that it should be treated as a category and thrown in with all the other stuff. And it, it just, it adds to this, I think, intended desire to make things more and more confusing for people to discuss gender, sex, sexuality, as though they are all distinct traits but like really related traits um that they control the conversation over and so like if, if, if now this is going to law this is going all the way up and so here we here's a situation in which 20 years ago a girl who played with uh boys toys and like to play baseball and like get dirty and stuff was just called a tomboy and we didn't think that she was another gender she was just a, a girl that liked to do boyish things, but most of the time, like 90% of the time, she would just end up being a woman later on in life. She 20 years ago was 1999. I think they would have been called like a riot girl. Okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, as an example. But yeah, and like if a boy, when he was really little, uh, you know, put on his mother's high heels and walked around the house in them, we just thought that was a boy that was just like being, exploring his environment, which is what boys do. Oh, but unless, they're, unless they're my mom and then they start saying that I was gay when I'm three. <laughs> yeah. but like you know and some of them might grow up to be gay sure and some of them might grow up to be regular straight boys and some of them might grow up to be straight boys that are drag queens whatever it, it could but nonetheless i'm not really are there straight i assume there are straight drag queens out there i don't know uh, 
Uh, hard to say. Hard to hard to. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna, I'm, I'll assume that there are some, but probably they're the minority. But the point is, is that we didn't assume that because they were engaging in this behavior as children back then, that it meant that they were another gender or somewhere in between on the spectrum. And not only have we moved away from something as simple as people growing up and you know just sort of like exploring their environment, and understanding the world around them, um, to a point now where we're not only thinking thinking that because someone decides like a, a kid boy tries to put on a dress that he must be trans and therefore we have to start transitioning but we talk the kids into it you know yeah. and, and and um like we're engaging in this and it's being put into legal you know it's being put into uh on some level it's being made political obviously and it's being put into law in some way and we're medicating kids for this and it's just it's crazy that we're taking something that was yeah instead of giving kids and, adderall they're giving kids hormones yeah well it's so weird too because it's like i mean or just letting them be boys until they, you know, they kind of grow out of it, which is, I, I think, in the boy in boys' cases, that always happens. It it just seems so easy. Like it's like they're actively trying to give, you know, like yeah. evidence, ev well, trying to give evidence for like weird American genocide conspiracy theories or something yeah. it's like it's like i mean i'm oh, not, yeah. i'm obviously not a conspiracy theorist i would never ever dream of talking about conspiracies on my youtube channel i would never do that but I, like okay it's like maybe like there there used to be people that were probably saying that if if gay gay people became normalized it would be the end of america because then everybody would be gay and they'd stop having children blah 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 blah. but then people realized wait no it's actually not really that hard for gay guys and lesbians to have children they, they figure it out but yeah. um like if you're non-binary you don't because like you're supposed to not have it like you're supposed to be a a genderless alien that has you know doll genitals a aka none and you go on um i mean like i've, I've seen non-binary identified people all over youtube I, there was this one girl in particular how during what how do you pee do you just like <laughs> I mean, I'm just like, uh, I don't want to, don't, don't answer um, that. It comes <laughs> out in the form of Guardian articles. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was this, there was this, this one chick um, who she was this like, okay, she was extremely mentally ill. Um, she would, she would brag about how mentally ill she was. This, this was like 2016 when I had first um, started on YouTube and I, 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 this was during the election and she would find every everything on the internet having to do with non-binary and she would start commenting under it and being like, yeah, I'm non-binary and I hate how people don't accept me, blah, 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 blah. I, I think I even remember her name, but I wouldn't want to say it, you know, and she she had the freakiest haircuts. I have her in my videos about it. Um, from from 2016, I have pictures of her just because she was so weird looking, and she went around talking about how she did have gender dysphoria, but she was also a cutter, so she like cut herself. She was so she so this is just someone who has like major abuse issues, you know, like something happened to her oh, yeah. when, when she was very small, and she hates her body. And one of the things that she wants to do when she can afford it is get her boobs chopped off and get a full hysterectomy, which which is. Mm -hmm when they um cut out all like both your uterus and like all of your girl hormonal sex so there's no possibility that you could ever have a child and um that was like it, it, like 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 the point of this the point of this little movement that she latched herself onto and was like trying to be a spokesperson for and like trying to meet friends in the comment section below every guardian article about it or you know because like i i would see these articles and i would be like i wonder what the comments are oh it's her again you know like that was um it was like the point of that whole thing was it seemed like sterilization yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. And even just to back it up, there, mm. you could kind of look at the, the promotion of trans among children as a gay genocide, right? Mm. E even barring the idea that it becomes so widespread that it affects, you know, but, like, 
I was getting to what that actually. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, like, this is a good segue. You can't be gay, but you can transition, and that's legal. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. This is something we talk about, and, and so yeah, let's transition to transition to the topic of why does the left hate gay men so much now? Um, what is the uh, let let's let's count the ways and let's talk about why we think that is because this is something that we've talked about um, a few times on gay triarchy. Um, Space Pan is uh, 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 what's the um, ANCAP? He is an anarcho-capitalist. Uh, Jordan I can tell by the colors. What's that? I can tell by the colors. But... Yeah, yeah. He's like it, that's my dog whistle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, Jordan is a full-blown Republican. He was. Uh, uh, raised as Republican, decided to have a rebellious liberal phase, and um, I would say culturally is still quite liberal, but is a full-on Republican again. Um, I, no, I think those are actually, this is something, I just want to say this really quick, I'm sorry. Uh, the left and liberalism are not the same, and Republicans can absolutely be liberal. Um, I, I would I, say that the Republican is dramatically more liberal than the left right now. Especially these days, but the but the left was never liberal. Liberal. I think that there's a difference between liberalism and the left, and I think the left has co-opted liberalism to call it their own. And I can no, give, no, no, they hate it. They, 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 they. I can give you some evidence of that or some proof of that uh, okay. with an example. But, but go on. I'm sorry. Go well, on. Well, I think that the left is trying to uh, 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 culturally um, destroy the concept of liberalism. They think that liberalism is no good uh, because they want everybody to be full blown, far left, you know, intersectional feminist, neo, yep. Mar neo Marxist, communist wackos, and um, that's why they they will they will go on forever about how much they hate liberals. And it's it's seemingly just because I think liberals are too rational and they can't deal with. Yeah. That because if they the if, if, too, right what mm -hmm. liberals get the bullet too that was the antifa saying yeah, yeah. And, I, and i think that the reason why is because liberalism undermines their extremism because sure. why would anybody ever even consider their extremism if liberalism was an option yeah um, i mean liberalism has nothing to do with being on the left nothing they're completely yeah. different yeah and so okay um so space pan and cab Jordan, Republican, if I got something wrong or something worth saying, you guys should say it. I am the, um, uh, we were, we were actually discussing what I was a few weeks ago. Uh, and, um, the best way for me to describe my political beliefs is that if I am a centrist, it's a, I'm, I'm not like a centrist centrist where I'm like, refuse to take, you know, hard, hardline stances. I'm just extremely specific about every hardline stance that I take. And I'm extremely, mm. extremely clear about my beliefs. And they, I have beliefs that to, to, to the layman's, to the plebeian average person, it, it, they would seem self or they would seem contradictory. So it's hard to actually have uh, a, a, an actual definition for what I am. I'm a constitutionalist, but I'm also um, it's so socially extremely um, liberal. And I think that, you know, for example, being a men's rights advocate is the liberal position. I think that feminism is a conservative position. Absolutely. And, and I like making that distinction. And um, so the left though, um, totally i i think is overall is is a a conservative position but not conservative like there's if you look at the word the definition of the word conservative it can reply to all sorts of different things and so like you can be a conservative jew in that you would be an orthodox jew and you can be a um you know a, a right-wing liberal jew or something like those those are all possible things mm -hmm. and I think that the left is is has gotten to the point where it's just a conservative position. Like it, you can be a conservative liberal. I know that that doesn't sound like it, but if you can, if you want to, that's what a lot of people are doing now from the left. They're trying to conserve our liberalism, our liberal democracy. Yeah, yeah, and so with all of that in mind, I think that most of the stuff on the left, like the identity politics, is it's all very conservative. It's all based around it's, it's all based around the stuff of of decades and decades past you know like often the pre-world war ii era is when this stuff was dreamt up you know like they they had that that woman that i talked about in my video claudia jones who was like i'm triply oppressed so you should listen to me and prom promote me into leadership positions because i am a black woman and 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 it worked like she like before <laughs> world war ii they were like putting her in charge of communist stuff because of that you know and so i think that that attitude is extremely 
um, it, it's dated and you could, and you could call it conservative. And that attitude, um, has always been used to demonize gay men. Like it, it, the, the one thing that I do know is that in communist, um, uh, communist regimes, they always ended up feeling that gay men were a sign of bourgeois capitalism, um, that gay men, yeah were selfish for money and, and decadent, decadent. Mm -hmm. yeah they, they they were they were counter-revolutionary because mm -hmm. they liked i don't know partying and having fun and fancy things mm -hmm. um and and so um yeah and, and i think well, that because they didn't buy into the family system yeah right. yeah yeah because you know straight men can you know be like oh well you know, wouldn't you, don't you want a future for your life and kids? And don't you want everybody's wife and kids to have a good future? Well, this is how we're going to do it. And, and, and we'll, we'll kill you if you don't fall into line. And they're like, okay, well, I guess I do want my, a good future for my kids. So this is the best option I have. Gay guys. It's like, um, do it or we'll kill you. Uh, uh, is that, are, the, are those my options? <laughs> you know, it's like, and so that's, that's like kind of the, uh, um, the traditional thing and and now i think that you know it's a combination of that um and um also the how how feminist everything is and feminists cannot stand gay men never can never could and it, it, all the feminist theory texts never has a single good thing to say about gay oh, men. absolutely absolutely i've seen uh i remember a guy i met uh in 2016 i went to the icmi in london the first time and he was a man that backed a project called american circumcision which is a documentary about circumcision but he was a gay man and he told us a story about how um he was showing th they he went to a showing of another documentary film about uh feminism and lesbianism like their you know relationship between them and it was like a, a theater packed full of lesbians watching it and other women who i assume are probably not lesbians or they're bi or whatever but he was watching it too with a few of his friends and afterwards they did like a q a and he asked a question i can't remember what it was but i remember him asking a challenging question challenging feminism and also uh, not even like in a in a, a negative way but more like to include gay men because he wanted to talk about circumcision and he was hoping that they would help him with this project and these lesbians were so angry that he would distract from what they thought was important which as uh, i understood it whatever it is they were talking about was not nearly at the scale of what circumcision was um that you know they drove him out of there and i think that he was kind of ostracized by his community for a while uh because he i mean he he thought that because you know hey you're gay i'm gay we can work together and they were like no you are not one of us you know <laughs> and so yeah, um, yeah yeah like yeah, you can, you can polish our boots man yeah yeah that, that's kind of, that's kind of the attitude and so um uh, there's that, and then there's also the the the, the blatant ties with um, Muslim uh, and Islamic uh, governments and wealthy Islamists mm -hmm. that that fund so much of this stuff. They have they have they have this symbiotic relationship with each other, which is that sure. do domestic communists. Um, what they what they offer in return to the Islamists is that a lot of the in Islamists. Um, either spend time in the United States or are full blown residents. And they um, have ties to the people in the Middle East. Often they somehow raise money and send it to terrorist groups and things like that. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't know how they, exactly they do it. Maybe through mosques or something like maybe people come and deliver a bunch of money to the mosque and then they ship it on over to Afghanistan. I have no idea, but um the homeland security has tried to like put a stop to this and then the communists are have a lot of lawyers and they defend these the mosques that do that and i'm just i don't know for sure that it's mosques that's just a mm -hmm. possible example but they they start defending the rights of religious freedom and uh free speech rights to make it so that the islamists are allowed to stay in the united states and keep doing that um because there's lots of lawyers that are communists it turns out and so the islamists i think probably pay them because there's a lot of wealthy um you know people in places like Iran and Saudi Arabia and probably even Afghanistan so that there can be um uh 
Islamists living in the United States and the mm. communists, the communists make that possible. And so that's what the, that's what that relationship is. And so, you know, you get to the point where Obama becomes the president, Obama, who lived in, um, I believe, Indonesia. And you, there's numerous pictures of him dressed up like a full blown Muslim. And he's, you know, slipped up and talked about his Muslim, I mean, Christian faith, faith, like, mm. and, and maybe, maybe somehow they were, talking about how people accused him of being a, a I, I, like, I don't know, I didn't listen to that full interview and if he just randomly accidentally said it or not, but I mean, clearly the guy was really around a lot of Muslim, like it's not like he, this is an unfamiliar thing to him. Um, and he was a part of the far, the hardcore radical far left, you know, uh, the, the stuff that David Horowitz, who's my favorite political author um, uh, of, of the moment, um, David Horowitz was writing about these far leftist groups of communists um, that that are largely involved in anti-war and um, you know stuff around women's issues and black civil like black extreme extremist type stuff. Those people um, uh, do uh, have direct ties with Obama, you know, like though, and, and he was talking about those people and how they're they're a problem before Obama even was a senator. He was mm -hmm. writing uh, writing about those people, and then it's like those people managed to produce a winning presidential candidate. And then you know he gets in office, and you know you're not allowed to criticize him because he's black. And David Horowitz is like he's a, he's a communist, you know. And like David Horowitz was a, was a communist himself. He was Obama's from Chicago, and Louis Farrakhan also uh, stays in Chicago, and they live in the because I live in Chicago, uh, so, so you know, uh, mm -hmm. and they live in this. They lived in the same part of. The city in the same neighborhood and i'm pretty sure that they like hung out together and stuff that's yeah and that's surprising doesn't mean anything all by itself i get it but louis farrakhan is of the nation of islam and you know he has said some things yeah so <laughs> when when you when you and when you look at the islamic faith um of course there's you know numerous different little factions of islam but uh it's never okay to be a homosexual male but it can be okay to be trans or lesbian. I don't know if they care about lesbians much. I, I, I actually have a thought that I think kind of ties in um, this idea of like, how they're so like um, accidentally conservative. And it has to do with um, the great chain of being, which is like super hyper conservative, like ancient conservative, this idea that everything has an essential nature and then you rank everything in that way and things can't not be their nature and this assigning of, of the way they treat trans issues and gay issues and the way that they use the intersectional stack perfectly mirrors it. And mm -hmm. it's funny because if you go into certain aspects of feminism that are like much more heavily ideological, like TERFs and um, the eco-feminists, what you find is that because they're trying to make feminism and gynocentrism somehow philosophically um, consistent with itself, um, essentialism is like an F word to them. Like they hate it and they hate this idea of the great chain of being, but these are also the feminists that like kind of the core mainstream central feminists, the more like left-wing political feminists actually don't get along with and are actually at odds with <laughs> because they're, they're trying to make them consistent and they're, they're actually not applying this thing. But, um, yeah, I mean, and then as far as like, like uh, this sort of like hatred towards gay men, this sort of overall topic, it, it really seems like it's following this pattern of male feminists, like seem to, like, like, like they have all these ideas about masculinity and they're really talking about themselves. And this is why we have so many male feminists who end up just being awful shitty people. And it, it really seems like the way that they're treating each of their groups that they're trying to target and throw in their basket is they're, you know, they're, they're kind of like putting another notch on their belt. Like they're trying to like, like okay, like I like, fucked you, now I got you, like don't get out of line, bitch, right? And that's why yeah. it's just the minimum amount to get you on their side to count on your vote. And then once you're out of line, they're extremely vicious toward you. So it all kind of hangs together in a really logical way. Yeah. Also, feminism is really conservative all by itself. I mean, it is asking men to do the thing that they've been doing since the beginning of men and women. It's just it's just claiming you know responsibility or taking credit for the stuff that men do for women. That's that's but it's not it's not doing anything new. It's not progressive at all. It just uh, it's just asking men to do the thing that we've always done. Yeah, yeah, and um, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, and I guess 
asking men to do the thing that men have always done, but then give women credit for having it be their idea or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they do. They, they co-opt everything. I mean, you know, like they, they, that's why they keep, I just watched a debate uh, today with Elizabeth Hobson, who is one of the British badgers and a, a feminist woman about free speech. And it was just about free speech, whether or not like it's important to essentially fix the sex war, the, the, the current sort of culture war between the sexes, which I think in a lot of ways is probably the most important part of the culture. I think that the yeah. race thing is a distraction um, and it's really more about the sex thing. But this woman, this woman that she was debating was such an NPC robot that the only thing she could do is just say the, the, the usual talking points. And that was just it. She just regurgitated stuff, you know. Uh, uh, wait, 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 let me guess, let me guess. <laughs> freedom of speech is not freedom from consequences. No, no, she didn't even talk about freedom of speech. Oh. She just started talking about wage gaps and rape cultures and one in five and 77 cents in the dollar and women can't be mothers and toxic masculinity. Mm -hmm. It was just, and I was like, what does that have to do with free speech? It's kind of, maybe kind of like when um, Jordan Peterson debated Neil deGrasse Tyson and yeah. Um, um, no, my Eric, um, uh, Michael Eric Dyson. Michael Neil Eric Dyson. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. 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 Okay. They, they're not completely different looking. I'm not just being racist. No, no, no. <laughs> they actually kind of look similar. But um, like that guy, it was like supposed to be has political correctness gone too far? And the guy is like, man, so many whiny ass white men. And man, Dr. Peterson, I mean, you you rich and you white. Why are you tripping? Yeah. And it's like, uh, so what are we talking about again? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Reminds me of a tweet I saw. This guy tweets like, "I'm happy every time I see a black man prosper." And then this kind of like, like fluffy, like liberal chick responds like, "Like also, it's good when all people prosper." Then he responds, "I said black people." <laughs> <laughs> like no, bitch. I said black people. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm afraid I have to go, guys. I'm sorry. This is a really great conversation, but I got to get my dinner. Um, but I did have a lot of fun. Okay. Well, yeah. It's it's been a uh, really great talking to you. I feel like we didn't get to that thing that you had said that you wanted. Well, to talk about. yeah. I mean, I wanted to. Well, that was a couple of things I really wanted to touch on. One was the left's control over words. The other one was, and I think I did touch on that. Um, that the words thing is huge because you got to like really pay attention to the language that's used because they're that's where the propaganda comes from is the manipulation of language. That is their greatest weapon and has been extremely effective. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because like one, like if if once you think that you. Know know the debate three years later the debate yeah. will be different because they will have changed the words used to yeah. define the debate a few years ago yes and it's a slow process like like for example uh you know at one time we knew what rape was we knew what it was it was a very specific thing and the only thing that needed to change was we needed to include men as victims that was the only mm -hmm. thing we needed to do and but they've done way – they haven't gone in that direction at all. Like like men, most feminists still don't think men can be raped. Uh, actually, probably a lot of people don't think men can be raped, specifically by women, uh, only by other men. But the um, – the other thing is that they've included, they've taken rape, sexual assault, and even sexual misconduct. If you look at like Me Too, like for example, uh, Louis C.K. pulled his dick out and, and jerked it in front of two women after he asked them if he could, and they mm. said yes, but we're mm. considering that to be a sexual assault. They're putting mm. it on the same level as a full-on rapist or like the stuff that Harvey Weinstein is accused of, which is essentially offering a woman a role if she sleeps with him and that woman saying, yes, I'll do that for the role. And now we're calling him a serial rapist. Like that's literally the language, right? Mm -hmm. So they've manipulated the words to the point where they don't mean what they're supposed to mean and they're only doing it so they can get more power and more influence and create more fear amongst people and it has only expanded bill cosby is the same as as far as i knew and i there's a lawyer that i know is very experienced he looked into the case very closely and he said bill cosby was just lynched because that he was not guilty the only thing that they found was that women had or bill cosby had confessed that women had taken drugs with him but, but it was not 
it was not revealed that that was uh, not consensual. They went to him to take drugs with him. Mm -hmm. And so this, this, there is an important difference. Like if you go and you bring a woman back to your house and she's like, or, or a man, whatever, and you guys want to get drunk and have sex and you do, then she goes and calls the police and says it's rape. So or, or she she writes in Vanity Fair thirty five years later. That, yeah, or she waits thirty years and then goes on Twitter or goes well, to Vanity Fair. Well, and that Vanity yeah. Fair article, I actually like. The, yeah. it, was like it was a, a fir the, the 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 thing the, the the first thing that was that came out about Bill Cosby was the the Vanity yeah. Fair article. Yeah, that was yeah. The it, was, it was like some former model who wanted to be an actress or something like that. It started it started from a joke that Hannibal Buress told, um, who is a friend of Amy Schumer's. He's like a stand-up comedian. He made a joke about Bill Cosby drugging and having and like raping women, and then it was a joke he did in a stand-up show once. And then because a this is where it comes from, one stand-up comedian told one joke at the expense of a guy, and people presumed that there might be some truth to it. I guess, and all of a sudden these women came forward, and in the, and Bill Cosby was about to. By the way, he was about to start a new show. I don't know that this is entirely related but it might be he was about to start a new uh television sitcom because he wanted to bring more positive black um figures to entertainment like he thought that it wasn't happening and that he he was uh, hoping that after you know his long run on the cosby show that more people would follow suit and they had oh and he must have been yeah. he must have been a capitalist that wasn't yeah. a full-blown far leftist and obama said no 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 you can't do that <laughs> I, I'm not sure, but I do it know that intact black he, family. I think that was what made it. Yeah, Wait, what, what, what? What he to do. No, he wanted to do a show about an intact black family. That's what he wanted to do. And so he, that's the conspiracy he, angle is they wanted yeah. to shut that down. They can't have that message. Yeah, that's you know? the conspiracy angle, right? But he did. He did. Which, make which, which of course, we, which of course, we do not advocate on the gay trigger because I would never no. utter a conspiracy on my channel. Michelle Obama has a dong. But but he, I mean. You know, it's a it's a fifty fifty chance, right? But like, um, but he did criticize the the state of black culture in America openly in many many uh, you know sort of public uh, speeches that he's done because he cares. He wants to fix the problem, and this was not long before he was like, "I'm going to make a new show," and then all the allegations come out, and now he's in jail, and he's you know. Like he probably wasn't guilty, and so I'm. This yeah, is he the, very likely wasn't. And what I was going to, I yeah, I, no, I go, ahead, to go ahead, real quick. That okay, I am someone that's maybe done a a little bit of sedatives in my life. Like I've maybe done a little bit of things that'll knock you out and everything. Mm -hmm. Like I might have, might have. Um, let me tell you. If you read even just the Victoria's Secret article, that was, I mean, it wasn't even an interview. It was like she like decided to like publish some, you know, 3000 word essay about the time that Bill Cosby raped her. It was not believable at all. She went like, mm -hmm. she was supposed to be an audition. And he was like, she, you, he, you should come over to my apartment, my house. I didn't know if I wanted to go to his house, but I did. And then he had this really fancy espresso machine. And he said, you should have some coffee. I said, no, I don't need any. And she said, you should have some coffee. I don't need any. And then it, she really, really insisted. And then, so she finally had a cup of her his espresso. And then she had one tiny sip. And, and within less than two or three minutes, she could feel that she had been drugged and drugged hard. Now, mm -hmm. that will never happen. Even if she was given a lethal dose of a sedative she will not be feeling it in anything under 15 minutes it's not but she was acting like she could tell within like less than five minutes and it's just like okay that by itself is not believable sorry i just had to say that go no, on it's okay it's okay so anyway that was the first thing I, I wanted to talk about was the manipulation of words i think um uh, I think that that was a, it's important and we have to keep an eye on it and constantly point it out because I have read I don't know how many articles I've watched lots of videos I've spoken with leftists I've argued with them and I that's just a running theme throughout is the manipulation of language and I think it gets passed down through academia obviously that's the that's likely the source of the problem the other thing is as a result of this 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 language uh, issue, this thing with, with redefining words, um, the left has been conflated with liberalism. And this is one of the things that I also really need to drive home because I remember when I started off being an, um, 
an MRA and do, engaging in, I wouldn't even call myself an MRA personally. It's just like I do the act of advocating. And I guess that's what that means. You know, I'm not attached to the label per se, but when I started doing this stuff and I started getting in arguments with people like Kevin Logan and stuff, one of the things that they like to do, and this was also from me being a supporter of Gamergate back in 2014, uh, one of the accusations that got thrown at me a lot by people that were feminists was that I was a right wing conservative. And at the time I was positive that I wasn't. I was like, no, I'm not. I'm actually on the left as well. And because I thought that when I was saying that, I was saying that I was liberal because that was sort of like how it was, even in my college, it was used that way. If you're on the left then you're liberal, right? And so um, I fought against that. I didn't want to be cast in that light. And over a long period of time, I really started to think, why is it I take offense if someone thinks that I'm a right wing conservative? What does that mean? I should probably stop treating it like this gross label that I've been given and look into it more to find out what the issue is. Because what I'm learning over time is that the left is not good. So they're always telling me that I'm on the right, which means in their mind, I'm not good. So what's the truth? So the thing I'm getting at is, is that the left isn't liberal. And here's the evidence that I have for it. Obviously, they don't line up ideologically. If you're on the left, that means that you want to spend other people's money, taxpayer money on programs. It's all about uh, essentially centralizing the government and basically everyone pays into it. And the degree to which you are on the left determines how much you want to spend. And I think that people are center that are center right are not, not necessarily people who uh, believe that taxation is theft, but they want to like reduce how much of that gets used. So they might be like, well, we can pay for roads and we can pay for, you know, bridges and like the simple things that people need. But I think we should dial like, like defense, you know, but maybe we should dial back on the welfare state and some of the you know, we don't want like universal health care or whatever. And the left wants to spend that. And I'm not taking a moral stance on this. I'm not saying that one is right or wrong as a result. Uh, I mean, I have my opinion, but I'm saying this is what it means. So if you go far left, you have like, full on communists. And um, they're the ones you really want to be worried about. Even the ones that are moderate, like they consider themselves to be moderate socialists, for example, uh, like Jim Carrey. Um, I worry about them because if they got into power, then the communists are just going to sweep in, stab somebody in the back and take over. So this is what always happens. See Venezuela, et cetera. The yeah, reason yeah, why if Bernie Sanders got in power, he'd be yeah. viewed in, in prison probably. or something. Yeah. And then they just give it to Alexandria or Ocasio-Cortez, who is, by the way, a plant by the Justice Democrats run by Cenk Uger. This is not a conspiracy. It's absolutely true. And I can I can imagine that being the case. But um, I would I would I wouldn't be surprised if she was the plant from Trump. No, no, she is. <laughs> no, she's actually. No, no, no. no I, I know that. I, I've heard that. Um, I she would like legit, to yeah, she legit works for Cenk Uger. That's legit. hilarious. It's a, you can look it up. Yeah, he put her there, and that's and then she's been on the show before she made it into Congress. But so, and you should be concerned. You should be concerned. But anyway, um, back in the '60s, when we uh, the the uh, Berkeley, you know, was known as the free speech capital, right? Because they were having these free speech rallies there, and they were making a free speech a big central part of these discussions that were happening in Berkeley. The people who started the free speech movement in Berkeley were communists that wanted to talk about communism, yeah. but they couldn't because we were like cracking down on the commies back then. So what they did was they were like, okay, so we're going to be standing up for free speech. We believe in free speech, but they only wanted to do it because they wanted to talk about communism. And so they push hard enough. And of course, because California is quite liberal, they said, okay, yeah, let's do it. And they did. But what's interesting is, is that those same communists, not the same people, but like that same ideology now in Berkeley, this is the reason why they went after people like Milo. And I think, uh, who else tried to speak at Berkeley? Was Ben, tried, did he try to go there? I don't know, there were people. Oh, there was all sorts of things. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and, and Coulter was supposed to. Yeah, and Coulter was supposed to go, that's right. Yeah. So they were supposed to, so various conservatives and right wing people were trying to uh, speak at Berkeley and Antifa showed up and create a, a ruckus uh, Antifa by any means necessary. And uh, what's the other one called uh, resist fascism .org or something like that. These groups that were anti fascist groups, basically communist groups, though, which are basically run by feminists, by the way, they would attack 
them and like do use physical violence because again they believe that words are violence so you should respond with violence but also when you ask them why are you um at this free speech event shutting it down when these people just want to have a conversation what was their argument their argument was that if they were allowed to speak then the first thing that they would do is seize power and then try to take away other people's ability to uh speak against them and they had like oh takes power. one to takes one to no one exactly they're doing the exact thing they're afraid that these people can do the exact same thing that they did yeah. So they know the tactics, right? And these aren't young people. These are probably, these are like professors and adults and stuff. These are probably people that were around, maybe not, I don't know for sure. Don't quote me on that, but this is what I'm saying, right? This is like, it, it comes down to that. So the left is not liberal. And yeah, yeah. The, the last thing is, I want to say is the alt-right is not right-wing. I don't even think that the alt-right is necessarily you. even real. No, no, the alt right. The alt right's real. There are there are some. There yeah, there are they're, some. They're, they're very. very I don't know about the uh, the whole um, all sorts of sock puppet accounts that'll harass you after certain nameless YouTuber that I'm not going to mention. Um, there's definitely people that like to uh, that like to LARP as alt writers on the internet because they um, and they have like 40 uh, sock puppet accounts and they seem to like do this as their full time jobs. That's, that's <laughs> a very weird weird thing that I know that cap that you came into contact with a few of them right around the time that we first started talking. Um, but I, I think that that's uh, uh, just something that needs to be said. Now I have to acknowledge this because you said that you had to go. Um, Miles Kinslow gave us me twenty dollars. Thank you very much. Says, hey guys, do you think it's possible to segregate um, to segregate workplaces between men and women due to the Me Too hysteria? Also, Brian heard that whites cannot enter the Nation of Islam headquarter uh, in Chicago on Stony Island. Island. Yeah, um, I don't know that for sure. I've never been to the Nation of Islam headquarters, but considering where it is, I doubt there's a lot of white guys trying to get in because that's a black neighborhood for sure. Um, it's like further south, and it gets pretty it gets pretty hood down there, although not by there because that there are even though people wouldn't tell you this, there are sort of like high end. Uh, black neighborhoods in Chicago where black people that have a lot of money and political power live. And some people like Jesse Jackson and various like athletes, they own properties down there. So that's, that's where this nation of Islam headquarters is located near. It's a, it's pretty, um, it's pretty highfalutin, but I'm nowhere near that. Oh, and, and lastly too, with that me too thing, somebody mentioned Michael Jackson. This is absolutely the same, absolutely the same as the Bill Cosby stuff. They're just, they're done destroying people for, um, no reason like for bad reasons like harvey weinstein and bill cosby they're done destroying people for really stupid reasons like louis ck but now they're trying to destroy people who have been dead for 10 years mm -hmm. and they're all men by the way and I've, I've heard this other thing too this is why the race thing bugs the shit out of me i saw a guy who i'm friends with that i knew from high school he's a black guy and he's very like pro-black you know black lives matter like you know that's right all that and he shared an image that somebody put together, kind of like a Tariq Nasheed type, that had a, that photos of like these uh, R. Kelly, who's also from Chicago, um, R. Kelly, Michael Jackson, Bill Cosby, and another black guy that's been accused of something. And he said, have you noticed that all the people who are accusing me too are black? You know, and I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> he tried to make it like, oh yeah, there's a conspiracy to like, you know, imprison and ruin in black men and i'm like dude you cannot see the forest from the trees you are so caught up in your skin color that you can't see that the common denominator here is not black people it is men if you stop if you stop for a second i mean like i can think of more than four men off the top of my head that have been victims of me too whether it's justified or not Kevin Spacey, George Takei, Louis C.K., Harvey Weinstein. That's like without even going, and there's like a huge list. Two of, of them are gay. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But not that, not that, that even is the predominant uh, issue. Did uh, you know that? Did you? This is for all you guys. Did you guys know that Kevin Spacey was gay before he came out? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 
I didn't think about it. I didn't think about it. Oh, for the record, for the record, um, I uh, you'd be interested in this. So I have a long time. Um, my 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 oldest, my most consistent patron. He's been a very loyal patron. Um, he uh is an Australian guy, and he's married, and his husband. Um, uh, so they're gay, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um. His husband was me tooed out of the job by a woman. Good lord. Yeah, yeah. and we're gonna maybe talk about that. Oh, he's here. He's like he's watching. Illiterati. Hi. It happens. <laughs> it, it happens because uh, I've seen it myself. I remember a girl who just didn't like a guy she worked with, and I'm pretty sure that's why she accused him of like doing something sexual with her. And I was like. She was making a really big stink out of it, but it was just because she didn't like him. And I don't mm. think he was gay, but that's not irrelevant. That's not relevant. I, I my boss, he was like, Well, we got to send this through corporate because we got to take these seriously. I was like, he wouldn't do this. This is bullshit. And so he's like, I'm sorry, but it's out of our hands. And they sent it to human resources. And she talked to them and the guy got fired. And I was like, This fucking bullshit. Yeah, this- that's I mean, that's why I made my channel. That was the literal motivating like straw that broke the camel's back Mm -hmm. that that actively was like okay you know i've been thinking about you know i was being outspoken on the internet but i was like you know have to have to actually make a channel once i realized that they were aggressively in feminist blogs and um youtubers like cat black were aggressively saying that gay men are constantly sexually assaulting women and I yeah. was like, "Oh, this is not going in a po- this is this is gonna this is not gonna end well, mm-hmm. you know." And so I no, uh, that reminds me. I wanted to say something else. I know I'm supposed to go, but I keep wanting to say more stuff. I'll just go for five more minutes. Um, when you made that, you made a video where you talked about contrapoints and how she is essentially like a corporate entity, like she's part of a co- of corporate feminism or social justice, oh, right? Contrapoint she- is Anita Sarkeesian 2.0. I'm going to make an yeah. entire video about all of the evidence. I don't think there will be any doubt when I do it, but it will be kind of long because there's so much evidence. Yeah, well, Anita's, you know, Anita's still out there, right? I made a, I made a stream. Oh, and they're, and they're, they're, they're friends. Oh yeah, for sure. But Google named a room after Anita Sarkeesian. If in Google, I think it's Google or Facebook headquarters. There's a room, a meeting room they named after her. So she's out there and she's influencing shit. And when I hear people that essentially used to be involved in the social anti-social justice discussion, but they left because they got bored. And I put that in quotes. Uh, it irritates the shit or out they, of me. Or they found Andy Worski annoying. Yeah, or whatever. They just basically are like, well, why are you guys doing that? Nobody talks about that anymore. You know, like, because it's still happening. The shit is still going on. And you decided that you're just not interested. Or, or, or they, they they decided they couldn't deal with the headache after blood sports or something. Yeah, yeah, or that. I don't know. He, but there is that too, right? Oh, it's so cringe. It's so lame. But yeah. um, the, <laughs> but fine, okay. You know, she's still out there. But the um I, I wanted to get to something before well, let me first first ask you guys this i wanted to say something else but i can't remember but how do you know that he was gay how do you know that kevin spacey was gay what's the evidence i want to um, know my sister lived in la and she told me just from firsthand of a bunch of people just going out in la and seeing it firsthand and how it was just like this oh. secret oh, okay okay so it really wasn't a really a big secret so all right um but anyway, uh, what was I going to say? Um, I can't remember. You were, saying, you were saying something that I was interested in about um, the ContraPoint oh. video. and the and Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Um, yeah, about that. Uh, Cat Black. So here's the thing that I'm noticing. A lot of these, like, SJW YouTubers that are kind of newer. Oh, they're they- all corporate sponsored. Yeah, they're all getting paid. Like you heard about Steve Shives getting um, a $2,000 grant from VidCon. And oh, that's like nothing. Like, uh, like well, ContraPoints is being like, like, but yeah. <laughs> but no, ContraPoints is living large. Mm-hmm. Cat like, Black, like, too. You mentioned Cat Black. Cat Black she, was. I don't know. She's yeah. not anymore, though. She got cut oh, off. Okay. She was yeah. getting thrown around in a jet to yeah, go. Yeah. No, no. And she was yeah. bragging. She was bragging about it. But mm-hmm. this, I think that, you know what? Honestly, and um, uh, I guess I'm saying this on air, but uh, you know, don't tell her I said this, and she might she might be watching right now. Um, I think I'm I mean I might be the guy who ruined it for her, um, because she was she was doxing people all the time, like, mm-hmm. and it was not even like subtle. She would dox people's work information and their name yeah. on yeah. her Facebook fan page, and I like. You know, she did it to a bunch of gay guys because gay guys got mad at her for um, 
uh, saying that gay men are constantly sexually assaulting women. Mm -hmm. And um, so she started like posting their their names. I don't I don't think she actually posted their like full on docs, but she did. She was doxing people like she was posting their work information that was sent in a private message to her on like Instagram. And somehow it like had the guy's work information. And she's like, I can't wait till these white guys start losing their jobs when, you know, or some crap. And you know, it's just like, OK, she's obviously trying to get this guy fired. And um, so. Yeah. After she did that enough, um, this guy Magog had a message to Susan Wojcinski compilation. Um, and he, um, I got asked to be in it. And so I was like, hey, Susan, could you maybe stop hanging out with Cat Black? She doxes people more commonly than she makes content. Even RuPaul had to block her on Twitter. And right after that, Cat Black made a fuck YouTube live stream talking about how she hates them and how they've been blowing smoke up th her ass, but then she's never getting any real money and she's going to quit. And she like quit for like five or six months. And now she's back and she's like, no one watches my channel anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think it might have been me. But well, <laughs> I'm not going to say congratulations, but uh, I, yeah, but I mean, I, well, but like, hey, it was her who did it to herself. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. There's one thing you kind of can't actually just do and constantly dox people. Right, right, right. Yeah, there was somebody else too. I just noticed this has like been, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, queer kids stuff also. They, they get uh, Leslie, is that her name? Or Lindsay? I don't Lindsay, know. Lindsay. Queer, Lindsay. Queer kids. She gets a lot of, uh, you know, Google or YouTube puts her videos like on the front page, you know, so that she gets uh, more exposure. And uh, despite her channel still being pretty small, at least last time I looked. So, yeah, they're definitely like promoting and uh, the, making these people into sponsors. And they all hang out, too. They all know each other and stuff. So, yeah. 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 Uh, okay. So I... You I gotta go, to say, but I gotta go. Yeah, I gotta hey, go. Um, I'm gonna end the stream because I wanted to mention something to you real quick. Um, but hey, it was lovely, everybody, for uh, tuning in. Thank you for the super chats. It was great talking to you guys. Um, any any final words? Um, yeah, I just want to say um, I've been listening to Honey Badger Radio since like 2014. <laughs> so I listened to it through oh, the entire great. trends. Yeah, of like, of like how it started, and then um, I just want to say that you know. It's really clear, at least from my perspective, that once they brought you onto it, and then as you became more and more involved, that the quality of the show, you know, it really shows. And that I think that really? how you guys have things organized, I think it, I think it's it struck like a really nice balance in everything. And I think that with a lot of the issues that we discussed on this um, stream here, like anybody who has been listening or been tuned into Honey Badger Radio during all this shit, like so much of it has been issues that you guys have been talking about for years at this point that have just suddenly kind of hit the mainstream. And like, there's so many just big examples of that where you just sit there like, wow, Honey Badger Radio called it. And I love that you guys have really held the line on a lot of these issues, even when the stances were kind of unpopular, like the stances now are seen as a lot more digestible from like a more mainstream perspective. But there was yeah. a time when the things you guys were saying and the lines you were holding were considered really, really out there and really extreme. And they kind of still are, but I just mm. really appreciate that, that there's a lot of consistency there. And I think you guys really have done a good job of it. Well, thank you. That's uh, really, really, really great to hear. I'm glad. And we've moved on to more uh, more really uh, contentious opinions. So we're, we, we're still fighting against people. Like we talk about Islam in ways that makes everybody uncomfortable. And But we think it's true. So, you know, we're going to stick to it. And um, thanks so much. And we're going to keep doing that. And I'm glad that, uh, you know, you guys, can, you can see that the, the show has gotten – um, I guess uh, better and uh, I'm gonna keep trying to make it better. I, I like I said before I'm gonna try and figure out how to add a call-in Feature so people can just get on their phones and call into the show and we can talk because I want to talk with the audience I want to have a conversation and um, Yeah, I'm, so I'm gonna keep trying to improve the show. So thank you and ask Allison to give me a raise while you're at it <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh at, at ICMI. I'll be there so we can oh, yeah, great. We can yeah. flank her no. I, 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 I just I'm, love that. I'm thinking I'm at quick so uh, ICMI 2019 We're hosting it this time. So this is the fifth annual international conference on men's issues Historically, it's been set up by justice for men and boys and a voice for men But now the honey badgers are gonna going to try our hand at organizing it and it's going to be in Chicago. Don't worry. You won't get shot. It's going to be a safe part. <laughs> I promise. And, um, What's it's the date? Be 
August 16th through 18th, 16th, 17th, 18th in August. So it's going to be right in the middle of summer. Uh, it will be hot, but I don't know wh where you guys are. I guess you're in Seattle, so you're probably going to be feeling pretty hot because you're probably accustomed to cooler weather. Yeah. But the, the place where it's at is going to be very air conditioned and we're going to have internet and it's going to be great. So, and a lot of great people are going to be there a lot. I, I am more than likely actually going to be there. I, I was not sure. You should. So, um, I'm, yeah, if you, if you, uh, want to uh, meet Prince of Queens in the flesh and maybe find out my real yeah. name and, uh, realize that I, I, I do not actually look like a 14 year old drag queen, even though I sound like one, um, you you can you can show up well you should probably get a little crown anyway so people can spot you in a crowd um yeah i would i've actually definitely considered doing that the glasses are are, are what i have like i actually wear the glasses kind of like that so uh -huh. Uh -huh. but um i i'm actually not a redhead um i'm i'm about as pale though um <laughs> so mm. um, yeah okay um well I am going to wrap it up because I, I do have something to say to Brian real quick. I know he has to have dinner, but I, um, he's going to want to hear this. So fine, um, thanks, thanks for tuning in, guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye.